um, our training will be uh, in two parts. In first part, we will discuss um, a, what business intelligence is and what Tableau is. Uh, we'll go through uh, Tableau products and uh, integrations. Um, and then we'll go um, through a more hands-on training for which I hope that most of you have uh, Tableau downloaded and ready to go. Uh, because this um, training will be, I think, most productive if um, you have it available and you are using it um, as uh, just like uh, just like I am, so that you actually um, follow me and um, try to uh, find uh, find out new things about Tableau that you don't know, or if you are a new user, uh, uh, just learn it uh, as a whole. So. Um, uh, the name of our training is how to effectively analyze and visualize data using Tableau. Um, and I am Irak Lekzali Shuli. I have been using Tableau for... Okay, we have... Uh, <laughs> so, um, let's get going. Um, um, so, what is Tableau? And in order to answer this question, uh, we need to ask what is BI? So, uh, or business intelligence. Um, business intelligence is leveraging software and services uh, to transform data into actionable insights. Um, and these insights will later on, at least we hope, that they will help uh, to inform organizations' business decisions. Uh, so, as you know, more and uh, very large quantities of data are, are being generated more and more every year. And uh, um, this can be transactional data or client data or uh, any other sorts of data. Um, and uh, companies and uh, also um, and other kinds of organizations such as, such as NGOs are in, uh, in need of analyzing this data very quickly, effectively, and um, they want to ditch Excel, they don't want to have uh, Google Sheets um, that, is, uh, mm, that is harder to use because uh, once somebody um, inputs something, uh, there, are, there is a big risk of, uh, mm, there's a big risk of uh, some uh, mistakes. Um, and it is a very painstaking process. So uh, very smart people have come up with uh, tools like Tableau, which is a BI tool, business intelligence tool, um, that helps us uh, automate the processes that uh, we have uh, concerning data. So Tableau is a very powerful and potent data analytics and visualization BI tool. Um, it, has, um, it has been enjoying a very uh, big interest among people from all the sectors, including business, researchers, journalists, and um, different industries. And um, I think the key reason why Tableau is so popular and so used is because uh, it is uh, very easy to deploy and it is very easy to use. Um, you can spend a couple of weeks learning Tableau or as an organization, you can um, use very little resources to uh, deploy Tableau. Um, and the, the benefits that uh, you can get from uh, this program are uh, huge enough for a lot of companies to be into this. Um, so, um, yes, it, in, it enables even a non-technical user uh, to create very, very customized and very interactive dashboards. Um, you don't have to be a data engineer to start using Tableau. You can uh, be um, a very uh, novice in the data world um, and um, have maybe an average or even like very small uh, knowledge uh, in Excel and you um, can still learn Tableau very quickly and uh, we can get effective in Tableau. So in in, in weeks or maybe a month notice. So um, if you're new to data science, don't uh, be afraid to uh, start using Tableau because it's, it's, a, it's a great gateway to it. So that brings me to why you should learn um, Tableau. And just as I said, it's great interaction to data science and uh, data visualization. Uh, and non-technical people can start using it and um, the benefits are, uh, especially for this kind of people, um, it helps you understand uh, how data works, um, how um, SQ, a little bit of SQL works, how, um, how data visualization works, and uh, it gives you a completely new perspective about, uh, about the data world. Um, and it has become an industry stand standard for handling data and uh, reporting be because it helps us automate these processes. Uh, we can create a dashboard and we can set it to um, update every day so that we don't have to use, uh, we don't have to um, ever do it again. So maybe if you wanna add something to the dashboard, you can for sure do it, but you, you can set it up to be updated every day. Um, it is very easy to learn. It's, uh, it requires no prior expertise or uh, experience with data. Um, 
it connects to a very wide variety of data sources, which is a big bonus for, um, for people with more technical background. Uh, we'll go into the integrations and in uh, larger detail a little bit later, but um, it has best in class analytics uh, and best in class uh, um, data source integration. There are other tools, uh, other BI tools, such as Microsoft uh, Power BI and uh, ClickView. Um, they are also very great tools. Um, and in this, in this training, we'll be focusing on Tableau because um, it is uh, the most popular and also uh, because of this complete, this reason that it connects to a very wide variety of data sources, uh, starting from Excel to um, Hadoop or other uh, big data platforms. And, also, and of course, uh, the traditional SQL database. It can be used uh, quickly to build interactive dashboards and stories. And by this, we mean that um, you don't have to spend much time uh, to create a dashboard. Um, once you are adept uh, at building ta at uh, using Tableau, you can um, build uh, dashboards uh, quite uh, quickly um, as long as you have data available. Um, and uh, the last but not least, uh, definitely uh, are the opportunities and uh, demand on Tableau. So. Um, in the world, there is an um, increasing demand on, uh, on Tableau analysts um, and also Tableau developers, um, and um, for, and this is uh, this is a great uh, opportunity because uh, if you are uh, searching for a skill um, that is a little bit more technical um, and uh, you want to improve your skill set with uh, um, with uh, um, something completely new or maybe something close uh, to your uh, profession right now. If, Maybe if you're a journalist and you want to um, visualize your data better or have uh, the data import process automated, um, and also you want to have a uh, you want to have uh, a career in uh, data analytics or uh, you want to uh, enhance your career uh, with uh, the skill, um, Tableau fits uh, all the use cases. So, um, how do we work with Tableau? Um, before we go to a more uh, technical uh, and uh, before, before we open Tableau itself, uh, let's um, let's go through how the process works. So uh, first, we connect to the database. Uh, Tableau has more than 50 integrations. In this case, we'll be uh, using Excel um, because it's, um, it's it's probably the best for the training. Uh, and it's, it had, and um, this tool, the data set that I'm using is very, um, very uh, popular and it, it, it has been used in many tutorials before. And um, it's uh, a good way to start uh, to start uh, learning Tableau. So we connect the database first. Uh, then we uh, create an extract or a live data set. Um, well, um, a live data set uh, and an an extract differ in uh, in some ways, uh, but not uh, very much when you're using a small Excel database. Uh, for example, if you're using a large database, uh, if you, uh, it's better to create an extract because uh, um, you can select uh, um, what period you want uh, your data to be extracted and it's done on your computer um, and it doesn't use up um, the server uh, the uh, server capabilities after that. Uh, but when you use live, um, you, um, the, perform the performance is being decreased for a larger, uh, for larger databases. Uh, so uh, a, live, a live data set is nothing else but uh, a is nothing else but a normal uh, extract, which is done today. Uh, not today, but maybe uh, right at, at the moment of uh, which you have been extracting data. So uh, if you're using uh, a large database, it's better to go with extra. Uh, after you have this data set, you can create worksheets, you can create dashboards and stories with Tableau. Um, this is the most uh, fun and interactive um, uh, part. Uh, you can start being building worksheets first uh, then you MS uh, these uh, worksheets into dashboards, uh, and if you further, if you want, uh, if you want to create even a, a more compelling stories, you can use the story function of uh, Tableau and uh, go that way as well. Uh, when you're done working and um, you want to share your results and your, um, you, you want to share your results or end your work to your colleagues or maybe uh, the whole world, you can share the um, workbook on the server. Mm, this uh, server can be cloud, uh, uh, which is also Tableau online or a Tableau public, uh, which we'll very soon uh, go through. 
uh, and also uh, and also local in your company's in your company's um, service. Tableau has um, a range of products that we will discuss right now. Um, this is Tableau Desktop, which is um, a BI um, the BI tool that we will go through today. Uh, BI and data visualization uh, tool. Um, Tableau Prep Builder, which is great and designed to help everybody to uh, very uh, quickly combine, uh, shape, clean the database. Uh, um, it is that it, it is uh, very close to a data management software. You can write uh, um, very simple uh, commands, and it has also has a drag and drop uh, uh, functions, and uh, you can very easily create. Uh, very uh, nice data sets uh, with it today. We won't go through it because it is a little bit more advanced uh, feature of Tableau. And uh, uh, the goal of today's session is to uh, get uh, acquainted with it. Um, Tableau Online is when uh, an organization uh, creates um, a server and it's hosted in cloud. So it's a private workspace on the web um, that you can share Tableau workbook, uh, work, 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 workbooks with your organization and colleagues. So it's bound uh, by your, your organization. The data is private, it's very well secured, um, and it uh, uses cloud data. Um, Tableau Server is uh, very similar to Tableau Online, online but um, you deploy, uh, as, an as an organization, you deploy Tableau Server um, in your own uh, uh, server, and you don't, know, you don't use Tableau's uh, cloud to deploy your, um, your dashboards or your uh, other types of uh, graphs that you want to create in Tableau. Uh, and um, the, the and we have Tableau Public, which is a free uh, service that lets users publish interactive data visualizations um, with a very large gallery of visualizations, uh, and you can see it and share it uh, uh, from anywhere. Uh, so this is uh, a free a free version uh, that you can um, that you can use to both create visualizations um, and uh, then uh, share it with the world. Okay, so uh, now you might say, okay, Rockley, you talk the talk, now it's time to walk the walk. So uh, we all, we can open Tableau right now and uh, take a look at, uh, and uh, take a look at um, how Tableau works. So let's go. Sorry, dear Forset, thank you. <laughs> um, okay, so when you open Tableau, this is the first uh, thing we see. Um, uh, I hope uh, some of you uh, are following, and um, I hope uh, you will uh, um, take a look at what we're doing and uh, try to uh, try to also do it yourself, or uh, maybe you don't want to do it yourself, but just um, observe and uh, see how uh, quick and easy and uh, uh, fun using Tableau is. Um, so. Uh, if you have Tableau on your computer, please open, and uh, we can uh, start to we can, we can start taking a look at the functions. Um, okay, so first we see uh, the connections. Um, we can connect to a Tableau server if we already have a server, but uh, we're not going to do that right now. Um, we can uh, connect to a file, and it has a, a variety of uh, file types that we can connect to. Uh, one of them being Microsoft Excel that we're going to use today. Um, and uh, if uh, you want to use Tableau to connect to a server uh, of your organization's database, you can uh, see all the connections here. So let's open more and see um, all types of uh, connections that we have. Uh, it has more than 50, 60 connections. Mm, Amazon databases, Google, uh, Google Ads, Google Analytics, uh, IBM and Microsoft, um, Hadoop, uh, SAP. Um, SQL, um, so a lot of possibilities that you have, you can with, uh, you can have with Tableau. Um, it uh, fits most of um, it, it. It it fits kind of all type of all kinds of databases. Um, okay, but uh, let's start with uh, Microsoft Excel. Let's uh, import the data that we have. So we click Microsoft Excel, um, and then uh, we go to um, documents. In my case and we open um, the Superstore um, data that we have right here. And it redirects us to, to our data source, uh, uh, data source uh, sheet. So here we can see the connections. It, it shows us we are connected to sample Superstore. Um, this uh, Excel file has three sheets, orders, people, and returns. Um, these three sheets, um, the, uh, one of, 
but let's take a look at all of them actually. So this one is the order sheet, um, which connects um, orders, uh, which, which has orders, um, order IDs, order dates, ship dates. So um, this is a store um, and we are taking a look at its transactions. Um, we are happy that we have our customers and customer names because uh, usually it's quite a problem for stores to have customer names and customer IDs, but this store has a very, a very nice capability to have uh, all uh, the names of the customers and it helps, it helps a great deal with the analytics. We have a segment, country, city, state, uh, postal code, uh, region, uh, product ID, um, and um, the category and subcategory and uh, product name. Okay, so uh, we have this uh, data right now here. Um, there are also two smaller, um, two smaller um, the, uh, databases here, uh, which is mapping of per people uh, to regions. Uh, I guess these are regional managers of these branches. And if you wanna see uh, um, which region has which uh, person as a regional manager, you can use this, uh, you can use this. And uh, the returns. Okay. Um, but uh, let's not go into returns right now and uh, let's focus on orders because it is the largest database um, and uh, with most uh, values and it will be more fun to see um, to analyze data from here. Here we can uh, select uh, live or extract. So since we're using Excel, we don't really need an extract. So we can just go with, uh, now with live. Um, and yeah, that is the first, um, that is the first sheet and let's go to sheet one. And when we open sheet one, we can see uh, the interior of uh, the interior of Tableau. Um, it shows us the um, data here that that we are connected to. Um, in dimensions, we have all the categorical uh, variables that this data has. Uh, this is category, city, country, uh, customer ID, and so on, and uh, all the measures. So the numerical uh, variables that this data has such as profit, quantity, sales, uh, uh, and others. Uh, all right, so now let's start uh, building uh, our first sheet. Uh, so let's say um, we want to see, uh, we want to have, um, we, wanna, we wanna see uh, how many sales we have per category. So we just click on the category, we drop it to rows or columns, let's do it with columns. Um, and here we see the unique values for categories that we have here. So furniture, office supplies, and technology. These are the three uh, large categories that this uh, store has to offer. Um, and now, um, as you can see, it, uh, it, uh, it brings only the unique values. So Talo knows that we are interested to, create, um, interested to create tables and charts, so it doesn't, bring, it doesn't display all the values. Um, and it displays only the uh, only the ones uh, that are unique. Um, actually, um, if you want if you want to have any questions uh, while we are having this training, uh, uh, I think it's better if we um, if we write in the chat and uh, our friends from Forset will help us um, and uh, ask them when uh, when the time is right. Okay. So um, let's uh, bring uh, sales now to the row uh, sheet. Exactly, I will quickly yes. jump in. So there is one question actually, um, yes. and it's do the participants need to have this exact spreadsheet? And if so, can we share it? Uh, yes, definitely we can share it. Um, I, can, um, up, uh, uh, I can upload it on uh, our uh, Facebook uh, uh, account if, 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 you're, if, you, if, you, if that's not a problem. Uh, yeah, and I can share it in the chat here. So it's yeah, sure. So um, I can upload this right now. Uh, this is a sample superstore data set.
maybe it's easier if I send to Teona and uh, then Teona can uh, distribute and uh, upload. Is it, is it okay, Teona? Sure. Yeah, I sent it to you. Messenger. All right. Let's go back. And here we have our first um, graph. I, I, um, I hope you all see the screen right now. Uh, and we have displayed the sum of sales uh, by, um, by category. So um, we have not named uh, our sheet yet. Let's name it, uh, let's say, uh, sales per category. When you double click it here, you can see um, that you can uh, you can edit a name, and um, that's how you should edit the name of um, a sheet if you would like to do that. Okay, so we have sales per category here. Um, we have bar charts for those. Um, it's probably a good idea to um, label this um, uh, to label these uh, bars. So um, here in the marks uh, mark square, you can find uh, color, size, label, detail, and tooltip. These five um, components. Uh, if you click label and uh, you uh, then click show mark labels, you're able to um, create these um, small labels on um, these bars. So uh, you can more easily see uh, how many, uh, how much sales we have per category uh, even is this. Uh, if you wanna sort this, um, uh, this, uh, this bar, uh, you can use this function here in the, uh, in the, in the top of, in the top bar, you can see uh, this uh, sorting. So um, this is uh, scrolling. Uh, this is the first uh, type of sort if you wanna uh, make it ascending. And this is the second type if you wanna have it descending descending uh, value order. Uh, also, this um, this uh, little uh, swap function uh, helps us to uh, swap rows and columns. So if you want to um, swap them, uh, you can use this one. So these three, uh, these three little squares, well, I think we are comfortable using them as of now. OK, so um, all right, we have the sales uh, by category. Um, now let's see the profits by category. Um, let's. Um, drag and drop this again to um, our uh, to our sheet and we can see that here we have um, different results uh, for different uh, categories so we can see that um, the profit margins for uh, for furniture are much lower than um, the profit margin for sales so now we see okay it's probably a good idea to have a profit margin uh, or profit ratio um, field that we can use. We don't have it in a database, but um, Tableau allows us to use uh, uh, our category. Uh, Tableau allows us to use uh, calculated fields, um, sort of making uh, new fields in Tableau. Um, it's called creating a calculated field. Uh, so we can uh, just click uh, click here and, uh, and then say create and then calculated field. Uh, and if you want, if you want to, pro, um, let's name it uh, profit margin. And the profit margin is equal to sum of um, profit divided by sum of sales. There we go. Uh, now uh, I think it's better if we make a new sheet. Uh, we bring uh, category here and then we display uh, profit margin. Uh, let's um, use the visualization of uh, bars like this. And we can see that, yeah, furniture has much lower profit margin, um, but um, profit margin is usually a number between uh, zero and one. Um, so it's probably nice to have it in percentages uh, and, uh, and let's do that right now. So let's uh, first show the labels. So this has 2.4%, uh, this has 17%, and uh, this is 17.4%. We can um, change the format of the profit margin by uh, clicking it in the rows here um, on the square, on, on the triangle, um, and then uh, we can uh, change its format. Um, when we click the format, it uh, redirects us uh, to the left side where we can see that uh, we, want, uh, we have uh, this uh, aggregate of profit margin here. 
um, and uh, we want um, it to be a uh, percentage instead of numbers. So here it uh, gives us uh, a number scale and we want to have it in percentages. So here we change it into percentages. Um, and also now we can, uh, we can change these labels too. Um, if we go to pane um, and if you uh, select uh, percentage, we're gonna see the percentage uh, uh, labels here as well. It's, uh, it, it now has uh, two decimal places. Um, it's usually when you're dealing with um, the percentages, it's better to uh, keep, it, uh, keep it at uh, one decimal place um, because uh, people don't usually observe uh, the second, um, the second uh, um, number there. Um, and you never want to have your labels too long, or uh, you don't want to la uh, label um, the data very uh, with very long labels. So let's uh, bring it to uh, let's bring it to one uh, decimal point. Okay, uh, we have our profit margins by category, and we have our sales per category. Um, profit is um, let's uh, change the colors of uh, these uh, charts because uh, well pro probably. Um, it's nicer to have profit in green. So if you want to change it, um, you click uh, here um, or you can um, you can see marks uh, marks again here. If you um, if you select all and you then try to bring it to color, it colors both both of these uh, numeric variables. Uh, but we don't want that. We don't want to uh, change all of them. We want sales in different colors. Um, let's bring sales to blue, red, and uh, profit in green. Mm, okay, and then uh, and then uh, we have uh, the colors for uh, this uh, um, these categories. Okay, um, if you want, um, usually want uh, these charts uh, because um, the sheets are usually uh, not what we show uh, in the dash um, uh, in. We show the dashboards. So um, here, uh, in order to have our dashboards uh, better in the future, it's better to um, come uh, uh, here in, in this pane and uh, select uh, entire view. It will make it a, a lot larger, but um, but this is this is better for uh, the future use uh, for dashboards. So just uh, bear with me here for a second, uh, and then when we go to the dashboards, uh, you'll see why this uh, this is better. Um, all right, um, let's uh, create a different uh, type of visualization um, as well. Um, uh, let's uh, create, uh, let's duplicate this. So uh, you can uh, right click it, uh, the sheet and uh, duplicate so that you have uh, uh, a similar duplicate uh, sheet that you don't have to do everything at the same time uh, again. So let's uh, bring, uh, if you want to get rid of uh, sales or get rid of profits um, here, you can just drag and drop it back. Um, and um, let's use uh, a pie chart in this case to uh, have uh, to have a, a pie chart. And uh, here we have a very uh, weird looking pie chart, um, but uh, we can always make it look better. Um, so first of all, let's uh, make it a little bit, a uh, little bit larger, and so it fits the entire view. Um, but see, when we hover uh, our our cursor, it shows it shows us the category and sales. Uh, but we want uh, these um, labels to be all the time there because we don't want to hover and see afterwards. We want to see them right away when we uh, when we use the pie chart. So. Um, you uh, select the label and show mark labels. And it shows us um, our sales by category. But you might say this is not also not enough because um, this uh, in, here in the legend, we can see this furniture, this is uh, office supplies and this is technology, but uh, we also wanna write uh, these labels here. Then, okay, we will uh, bring uh, uh, our category to the label. So it, now, we chose, uh, now we chose category in the label. And also let's add sum of sales as another label. If you don't wanna, uh, uh, if you don't really want to drag and drop much and, and you're a per you are a person that create, uh, that uh, uh, prefers to uh, create uh, these types of visualizations or if you're an Excel user that uh, doesn't use mouse much, you can always just double click here 
um, well, you have to click here and uh, then write uh, then, then write um, whatever function you want to write instead of uh, just drag and dropping it here. All right. Um, see, um, we have this uh, we have this pie chart here, but um, let's say we want to also display um, what percentage of uh, the sales has technology and furniture and office supplies. Uh, we can also do it here. We can uh, again we have to create a um, field for some of sales. Um, and here uh, we have an option to uh, create a quick table calculation. Um, if you want to calculate what percentage uh, a certain number is of a certain uh, poll, uh, in this case we have uh, uh, this whole pie and um, 800,036 uh, is um, 836,000 is just a is a fraction of it. So uh, we can uh, make a quick table calculation of uh, percent of total. Um, and here right now it doesn't show anything because um, here we have this small um, small square uh, and it's uh, set to detail. See, this uh, icon is the same as detail. Um, when in the marks, um, in the marks uh, square, if uh, you have selected, uh, we have, if you, if you have selected uh, this detail, uh, it will show you on hover. So uh, when I hover it, it shows me it's 36%. See, the percentage of total sales among, uh, along the table across is 36%. Um, but uh, I want to see it uh, when I see it uh, without, the, without the hovering. So I will uh, select label and the label grew a little bigger and it added uh, the total, uh, total um, per percentage. Uh, all right. Um, I think we can move on from the pie chart. We can also um, edit, edit the colors in the pie chart. You usually don't want to use uh, um, colors that are very different from each other. Um, Tableau uh, has a lot of color schemes. Uh, Tableau 10 is, uh, you can use it when you have uh, uh, 10 uh, different, uh, up to up to 10 different uh, categories. Uh, Tableau 20 is uh, for the larger data, for the larger categorical variables in which you have more than uh, up to 20 uh, variables. Mm, and it has um, a lot of other um, other ones like such as traffic lights, uh, such as um, Hue Cycle, um, Tableau Classic ones. Um, yeah, for example, let's uh, let's uh, go to um, let's say uh, blue, and let's select furniture to be like this, office supplies to be like uh, this, and technology to be like this. So, yeah. Okay, we have um, our first uh, pie chart here, and uh, yeah, I hope it's uh, it's easy to do and it's also understandable. And uh, we have uh, not many questions here. Um, okay, um, we can move to um, more of a time series analysis. So, um, if we create a new worksheet, which is created uh, with using this command, new worksheet. Uh, we have several date variables, two date variables, ship date and order date. So um, let's uh, bring order date uh, to, row, to columns. We have 2014, 15, 16, and 70 data in this data set. Um, okay, but let's say we want to split not um, with years, but we're also interested in, in uh, year and month. So, um, so that our time series has a lot of data points. Uh, we uh, click this uh, triangle here and we select month. Oh, sorry, selected quarter. Good, so we have uh, the list of all the months that are in the data. Okay, now let's see uh, the sales uh, during this uh, period of time. So yeah, this is how we create um, a graph, uh, a line chart. Um, when we, um, it automatically defaulted to this chart because Tableau has the recommendations when you create a chart that it automatically redirects you uh, to a certain type of chart um, that is, uh, that fits best, uh, that fits uh, best. You can also play around it and select different types of visualizations. Um, but for now, let's stick with the line chart. So here we can see that uh, the sales uh, well, they kind of look seasonal. Uh, so from March to March, you can see these uh, the shapes are kind of similar. Um, and let's say we want to test this. Um, uh, is the seasonality really there? Um, for that, uh, so 
First, let's um, again do the thing we have done before. Let's click labels and uh, let's uh, show the mark label. Okay, um, and now um, I, the best way to visualize seasonality uh, probably is um, to uh, bring uh, this data here. We can see the month month of order date in this uh, in this graph, right? So let's click it. And uh, if you take a look at what um, the options are here, it includes year and uh, quarter and month and day and more. And we uh, and then you can go to week number and weekday. But here we select month, and this month is uh, kind of a year month, so May 2015. Uh, but if we select month here, only month, it it selects only May. Okay. Um, and it means that May data will be aggregated for 2015, 16, 17, and 18. So let's do it like this. So right now it generated us a graph that uh, added up all four years um, monthly. And uh, in February, we have um, this four year date of February. And of, in March, we have uh, four years of March. Mm, but this is not the data that we're going to be looking at. We want to be looking at, at uh, yearly seasonality because we are interested in that. Um, so we um, select, um, we find order date again here, and we bring it to marks in the color. All right, and now what is what it has done is uh, we have uh, split our uh, data into four lines, and um, these lines um, are different colors, and it's by each year. So 2014 is uh, this line. 2015 is uh, this line, 16, and uh, then 17. So you can say uh, clearly that there is seasonality. We can create uh, some labels for growth. Uh, um, we can uh, take a look at um, what um, what whatever we whatever product we want to uh, take a look at and see its seasonality as well. Uh, so for example, uh, um, let's uh, go to let's start using filters. So uh, we have uh, this uh, category here. It's called product name. Let's bring it to filters. When you bring the filter, bring it to filters. It uh, it first uh, gives us all the um, all the possible uh, values here. And when we uh, click apply and select all. So if we select all, it obviously doesn't filter anything, and we just apply the filter. And then we can edit filter. And um, well, let's say we want to see only. Only this uh, 3D uh, systems queue printers. Well, not many data points. So um, we can uh, try some more. Uh, maybe they have some seasonality. So, so for example, Cisco um, is uh, PA phones, let's say. Okay, so um, uh, this is how you uh, fil uh, this is how you use filters to filter different types of um, different uh, types of uh, categories. Okay. Uh, if you want to get rid of the filter, you just, uh, if you want to keep the filter up and running right there, you can, but uh, uh, remove the filtering, you just uh, select all again and uh, press apply. Hope not, uh, I hope I'm not going too fast in, uh, in case you want to uh, go uh, a little bit slower or uh, you want uh, to ask a question, please, uh, please go ahead. All right, um, so we can see how to do uh, seasonality as well. Um, now let's do um, uh, let's do uh, something uh, uh, let's do something about hierarchies. So um, in this data we have uh, state um, state uh, data, uh, and uh, as you know this is uh, yeah, okay this is only for United States data, um, and uh, we can uh, create a hierarchy with city and state because all the cities are part of state. Now, uh, first, let's do uh, a state level analysis. And um, actually, let's create a dashboard with uh, state level analysis. So how this uh, store performs across the states. That, that should be a very interesting thing to monitor uh, for um, the decision makers in this company, definitely. All right, um, state level sales. So we bring uh, state into rows and then we uh, see the sales. So. Uh, in this case, uh, it created this chart that we won't ever use. Uh, uh, we will prefer this type of graph, let's say. 
So we can see that, yeah, okay, I went really quickly maybe. So first we mm, select this uh, type of visualization from show me. Um, and then uh, we, will, we we probably want to sort it to see whichever states prefer um, perform that best. So we uh, sort it uh, descending. We see California is the uh, front runner for uh, the states. Um, okay, let's name the sheet uh, sales by states. Okay, uh, and again, let's use the labels so that we understand uh, exactly uh, what is happening uh, in the sales by the state. Good, um, I think by now everybody should be comfortable uh, doing these types of, uh, these types of charts. Um, and uh, we can move to, um, uh, we can move to see uh, some other uh, types of uh, uh, variables. Uh, let's create uh, mm, uh, let's create a sales trend for each state, for example. So let's duplicate this. Uh, let's call it uh, let's call this uh, let's call this sales trend. All right, and uh, let's display this data that we have here uh, by uh, let's bring it first to um, yeah. Let's do it like this. Let's remove the state and uh, bring order date so that we can have the dynamic of sales again. Uh, let's bring it to month. Um, and we have sales by state and sales trend. So right now, what we're trying to do is we are trying to create uh, some uh, sales level data uh, to fit in our dashboard. So it says sales by state and uh, sales uh, trend. Um, okay, one more interesting visualization that we can create with um, this type of data is, uh, um, is tree map. So um, let's duplicate this for, uh, for a second. Uh, we have sales by state again, and uh, let's click uh, show me first if it's closed for you. So click show me. And these are all types of um, charts you can build with this. And let's go with tree map. So, um, when we're using tree map, it will uh, bring it will um, show you um, this um, the squares, and uh, they're usually a good way to uh, visualize data visualize data that has uh, uh, not too many records, but uh, enough for it to be uh, relevant. And so uh, you don't prefer to use uh, uh, use a bar chart. Um, you don't want to use a tree map for uh, for data that has uh, less than let's say uh, five or uh, five or six um, five or six categories so states has have 50 categories so now uh, it's quite uh, it's quite possible and nice to use uh, trim up visualization on this so let's rename this and with trim up. all right we have sales data and we have uh, this uh, sales trend okay um, I think also this uh, company's managers will definitely be interested to see um, the profit trends for or, uh, by state and uh, the profit trend uh, uh, just like this, okay? So um, let's uh, duplicate uh, this uh, once again, uh, sales by state. And instead of sum of sales, let's uh, just bring uh, sum of profit. And here we can see some interesting things. Uh, some states um, have negative profits, some states have uh, positive profits. Um, we can um, sort it again uh, in, um, in this way so that we have, uh, uh, we have good representation. Um, so yeah, this is, uh, I'm gonna scroll it down. Uh, you, you can see which ones uh, are profitable and which, which ones are not. Okay, we're moving closer to, um, to our uh, dashboard. Uh, we have sales by state and uh, let's uh, call this uh, profit by state. Um, and before we were talking about, um, we were talking about uh, hierarchies, right? Um, that's why we started up uh, doing the uh, states. Um, so um, states, uh, usually um, we can create, uh, uh, we can create a hierarchy of state and region. So um, as you can see, let's take a look at the region. Uh, so region has only four. Uh, values, essentially south and west. And uh, when we bring state next to the region, it shows us which region is, uh, which state is uh, 
uh, connected to which region. Uh, okay, so um, maybe in the dashboard I can I can do a cool thing, um, which is uh, um, which is which will look like this. So uh, we select the state, uh, we just hope we bring it to region. And when we do it, it asks us to, uh, if you wanna uh, create the hierarchy, and yes, we wanna create this hierarchy of region and state. And uh, here we have uh, region and state. Uh, this, uh, when we bring it here, it uh, has region and we uh, plus, uh, when we click the plus sign, we can see the states. And we can use this uh, in charts as well. So um, right now here, we have profit by states. Uh, but let's, um, let's remove state here and let's instead bring region and state. Good, so it brings us uh, uh, the data by region. Let's sort it uh, with this uh, descending uh, function. Um, and here we have west and east and south and central. And uh, then if we uh, click the plus sign, uh, we can drill down further and see uh, which uh, uh, states and which regions are performing well or not. So maybe on the dashboard, which we're gonna build a, a little bit later on, we would definitely like to be able to uh, see it by region first. Uh, and then if you're interested in uh, some states, uh, then we can use the hierarchy function to uh, drill down a little bit more. All right, we done profit uh, by, uh, by states and uh, let's again color this um, in green. Um, and we have uh, sales, states by, uh, sales, state, uh, sales by states, we have sales uh, trend. Um, actually, let's create uh, another, uh, another um, sheet which is called the profit trend. Great, so we have profit trend here. Um, but it's just named profit trend by it contains sales. So we wanna bring uh, sales, we wanna bring profits here instead of sales. So bingo, we have a uh, profit trend here as well. Okay, um, I guess we are ready to uh, start creating our dashboard. So um, here we have uh, the functions, new worksheet, uh, new dashboard and new story. So let's go to new dashboard. Here, as you can see, uh, this is uh, a new, uh, the new sheet that we have. Um, it is the dashboard that we're gonna build. Um, as you can see, it, right now, the white, um, the white square is where our dashboard will be. The rest, but we don't wanna waste the rest. Uh, um, we don't wanna waste, waste, waste the rest of the uh, screen. So uh, in size, um, we want to uh, say, not fixed size, but automatic. So. Uh, so the dashboard can apply, be responsive and apply to the needs of the uh, screen. Okay, so um, if you wanna create a dashboard, you need to, uh, if you wanna add, uh, if you want to add sheets in the dashboard, you can just uh, um, take a look at the sheets that you have. We have these sheets for, for now that we have created. Mm, and let's start by sales by state and just bring it here. And okay, we have the sales by states. Um, let's add the sales trend to here. Uh, and we have uh, now a dashboard with uh, two charts. Um, we have also done a profit trend um, and we have also done uh, uh, profit by states. So uh, let's bring it as well. But before I do that, let me uh, delete it and uh, see uh, how, um, how this works. So when we did, when we did the first one, it just, uh, um, it just brought it and uh, it took the whole um, it took the whole dashboard space, right? Uh, but when you bring the second one, the second sheet into the dashboard, uh, it usually gives you this uh, way of uh, thinking about it. So where you where do you want this to go? Um, we if you if we if you do it like this, it will go before the sales by states. If you do it like this, it will go after. Um, if you bring it like this, it will go below it. So uh, that's why I went probably too fast. Uh, and uh, here, I think this is the best way to do it right now. So mm, I will uh, I will try it here. So here you can see we have region. Uh, West is thousand central. Um, and uh, if, if you wanna see it by uh, state, I just uh, remember we did hierarchy before. So I just click the plus. And uh, I have this interactive um, capability of uh, looking at uh, things into uh, larger detail and uh, I can see this by the states as well. 
All right. Um, actually, uh, we have sales by states here, but uh, I think it will be even better if we bring uh, the tree map here instead of this uh, bar. So uh, let's uh, remove this from the dashboard and let's set uh, sales by state. And okay, here we have this uh, tree map visualization of sales by state. Um, now we'll, let's go and add sales trend here. So it's right below the sales by uh, state tree map. Um, as you can see, this um, this is not taking the whole uh, space that it can take. So uh, we can just bring the mouse here and make it a little bit larger so that the dashboard looks a little bit uh, full. Um, okay, now we have sales trend here and we let's add the profit trend as well. Um, it's probably better to uh, recolor uh, this uh, to according, uh, accordingly so that we know it's profit. So we go, okay, so now uh, how you do this is uh, we have this uh, dashboard, we have this sheet uh, already brought in a dashboard. And uh, here we have some capabilities. Remove this from the dashboard, uh, go to sheet, uh, use a filter and uh, more options. So, uh, which we'll go on about a little bit later. Uh, so profit trend, we want to color it. Uh, we want to color it uh, green because now it's uh, now it's blue. And profit ups, uh, profit um, in the, our dashboard, we want all the profits to be green. So we uh, use go to sheet function. We click go to sheet, um, and then uh, here we already remember how to change the color. We just change it to green and. And we have this green. Um, we have the screen chart now, and also here we have it uh, changed. All right. Um, okay. Uh, maybe it's maybe it's gonna be a good good idea to add our uh, our uh, sales per category as well to this dashboard because it has uh, good information about um, uh, how sales have been doing uh, by states uh, and by. In, and, and also with the trend, but it's nicer to have uh, this pie chart that shows us uh, sales by category. Uh, we, again, we bring it here like this. And we have sales by category uh, added to the dashboard. Um, here we can play around with the sizes. So if you see, see if you uh, create uh, a line graph, you want it to be a little bit uh, wide so uh, we can actually see the changes a little bit better. Um, and uh, yeah, that's, um, if, if you have it like this, it's probably not a good idea. It's better, it's better for a line graph to be wide than high, um, than long, sorry. All right, um, we have this dashboard right now uh, and uh, let's add uh, some elements to it so that it looks, uh, it, it looks better. So um, when you go to dashboard, uh, which, is, which, which you can see, uh, uh, right here, um, you can see, um, you can uh, show title. When you press show title, it says, um, it tells you the dash, uh, dashboard site. It shows the dashboard title. And you can name your dashboard wherever you want. You can name it, in, in this case, um, let's name it sales by uh, state. And we have our dashboard uh, title. And here it has our text editor that is quite handy. Mm, we can uh, make it bold, uh, whatever we write, we can uh, uh, underline, change the color of the text. Uh, background will be darker, uh, which, uh, which also, yeah, we can do. Skip it like this and uh, also make it, uh, make it apply. Yeah, so we have this sales or maybe to a state level analysis. I hope my internet connection is okay because it just wrote me that um, my computer said that um, the connection is not stable. So um, I hope you can all hear me. Uh, okay, so um, this, is, um, this is the title that we have added. Now let's uh, uh, let's uh, add uh, let's make our titles um, a little bit more uh, stand out. Okay, so uh, we go to, uh, we um, we do we do it by uh, dashboard layout. Uh, sorry, 
we do it by dashboard um, layout changing. So here we have uh, uh, sales by say tree map and uh, Can you hear me? Sorry, because my connection was kind of sorry for a second. Uh, we can hear you directly, but your voice is breaking up from time to time. Okay, let me let me try to make it a little bit better. Okay, what about now? All good. Okay, great. So, um, formatting the dashboard, uh, we can. Uh, if you want to format the dashboard so it is um, a little bit more colorful, we can um, click format and format and, uh, and select the dashboard. Um, dashboard shading is the first one that we see. If we if we uh, change, uh, we can change the shading of the dashboard um, to whatever color you like, or your um, organization, or your uh, magazine, whatever you want uh, to go to have the uh, color. Um, if you want to brand it differently, you can do it from here. So now let's uh, keep the default uh, none. Um, and uh, here we can form a dashboard titles. We can uh, change dashboard title font and shading and border. So let's, uh, uh, yeah, okay. We can uh, create, uh, maybe you can add some borders too because uh, it, 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 it can stand out a little bit more. Um, okay, um, and then let's go to worksheet title. So worksheets are these elements. So this, uh, one, two, three, four, five elements that we have uh, integrated into our dashboard. These are called worksheets. Mm, so uh, if you want to um, have the worksheet title stand out, you can uh, uh, shave, you can create shading of them. Uh, maybe uh, some uh, use some color to shade it like this. Um, and uh, if you want to increase the font um, or if you want to change the font, uh, let's use Tableau Medium, for, for example, and uh, let's make them bold, for example. Yeah, here is how you can do it. So again, if you want to format the dashboard, you click Format, then Dashboard, and then you have this dialog that tells you, um, that shows you what you can do. Um, also, what I like to do is usually I like to, um, let's say, create borders for, uh, for some of, uh, or maybe all of the, um, all of the elements that I bring in the dashboard. So for example, here, if you click sales by state tree map and then, uh, then uh, you uh, make a border for it, that's also a, a possibility. All right, um, let's um, explore uh, some more uh, detail about uh, calculated fields um, right now. Um, because uh, this will be quite interesting, quite interesting if you uh, create uh, a table of visualizations yourself. Uh, and if you want to go into more detail about how to use uh, Tableau for its analytical functions. Um, all right, we can create a new, mm, a new sheet. Um, and here we can see this um, store is, has its customer IDs and customer names. So let's use the customer IDs for a good measure. Um, and we have all these customers that have um, made purchases here. here. Okay, um, maybe we just want to see how many um, how many visits they have made to the store. Tableau has this, its function number of records. So uh, number of records is um, how many times you can um, you can uh, we can find this instance of uh, a variable in a database. So um, when we bring number of records um, to the rows. And uh, when you go to show me, we can uh, we can uh, just fix, uh, see a table for uh, for quick um, e quick insights and sort them. You can see that we have one customer which has uh, visited 37 times, and uh, we have some others that have visited a little bit uh, less. Um, so uh, a state would uh, so the uh, store would be happy to see um, what uh, types of uh, Mm, what types of uh, users that has and uh, how many of them are active and how dependent on the active users the story is maybe. So um, let's, uh, let's uh, start um, segmenting our customers into active users, not really active users, passive users. Mm, and since, uh, um, and yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, we don't have, uh, mm, 
let's say this, this store has a very nice data science team um, and this store has um, generated uh, values that shows you what constitutes a, what constitutes a um, active customer and what's not and what is not a customer uh, active customer and uh, let's say uh, this data science team has told us that well um, if a user has uh, more than 30 uh, um, or more than 25 purchases um, that customer is very active so uh, we always want to take a look at that and see that this guy is a very active um, customer so um, let's create a, a calculated field and in calculated field, we want to uh, we count how many uh, purchases uh, a, a customer has. So uh, let's uh, name it sales by customer. Okay. Um, and here uh, we can count uh, the following. Um, we can uh, write this function that we have here. So uh, fixed. Fixed is a very nice function that is um, more of a medium um, difficulty, but uh, also um, kind of easy to use after a couple of times. So uh, fixed lets us group uh, lets us group uh, um, records into um, into groups. Uh, for example, if we write uh, fixed customer customer ID, we want to see um some of sales or maybe some of uh, uh some of quantity um and we can see um how many uh sales we have by each customer okay um okay we have this field and now we want to um judge our customers according uh, to this field maybe it's better to see it do it by sales again so let's uh, Again, do it by sales because we're going to see uh, the values. So that's probably a better idea. And um, now we can create a new field um, uh, which tells us uh, if a customer is active or not. And um, let's say um, our data scientist team has told us that we can count uh, a user to be active if it has uh, uh, more than. Uh, more than, uh, let's say, uh, more than uh, probably it's a good number to have 8,000, yeah, so um, 8,000 uh, sales. So it has, it has spent a lot of money on, in this store. Uh, okay, we can uh, start uh, creating this field by um, this uh, function. So um, let's again, uh, right and click this uh, uh, triangle and then um, create and then calculate field. Okay, and here we have uh, uh, another calculate field and there we can write. Um, if, which is another, which is uh, same, uh, you can use it in Tableau as well. Um, if uh, let's say sales by customer um, and it's more than 8,000, uh, then also a function of Tableau. Um, let's say uh, super active user. All right, so we can see if uh, sales is more than 8,000, um, then uh, super active user. So sales by customer is once again, uh, we counted total number of sales by customer. And if it's that, and if it's uh, more than 8,000, then in every record that this database has, it will write uh, super active user. All right, else if, Mm, sales by customer is, um, let's say, uh, more than 4,000. Um, and sales by customer, again, is uh, less or equal to 8,000. Then um, active user. Um, else sales by customer. Um, is more than 2,000 and sales by customer, again, is uh, less than 4,000 because in, in the previous one we had 4,000, then medium user or average user, let's say. 
um, and else in other cases. Um, in which, and these other cases will contain only the ones in which uh, sales by customer is uh, uh, less than uh, 2000. Uh, we can uh, write, uh, let's say, passive user. So not really, not really an active user of our store. So here we can see it. Um, if in Tableau is written really very easily, um, it has also the else if statements that you might have seen in different. Uh, uh, in Excel or in, or in um, different um, maybe other program languages, uh, and yeah. Uh, after the if statement, you always want to write end because it tells the, it's the ending function. And now we lack uh, the um, the um, uh, title, and let's now let's say title is activity. So how active our customers are. All right, we have this new activity. Uh, field uh, and we can start uh, using this for further analysis. So let's bring analysis. Uh, well, let's bring this activity field to um, to the columns. Um, and uh, yeah, right now it gives us number of records and it tells us out of all the records that we have, which is around ten thousand uh, uh, super active users have made only seven hundred and thirty eight of them. Uh, passive users 3k, average users 2.7k. But about okay, let's uh, let's go with sales now. So uh, let's bring some of sales here, and we can see that um, well, super active users, uh, and uh, and most of our sales come from active and average users. So we don't have uh, a few users that are really um, over um, overreaching. Um, this um, uh, this is very of of course um, the numbers that we have selected right now are very arbitrary. We just made them um, so that we can see how uh, you can segment customers in Tableau. Um, but um, you get the idea that Tableau is not only a tool for uh, uh, tool for just quick sums and quick um, uh, quick analysis, but also you can create some very deep uh, uh, level and analysis with Tableau. Uh, we can create um, user activity segments. Uh, you can uh, uh, select individual customers as well and uh, see individual data points. So um, a lot of possibilities here. Uh, all right, let's uh, make a pie chart for it though. Um, and uh, let's make it fit the entire view. Um, let's add the labels. Let's show mark labels. But we don't have, uh, but we can also have activity labels, right? because we want to be able to see it right there. So just write activity here and then uh, and then the label. And also add the sales uh, labels right here. Good. All right, let's um, let's name it activity. Um, and now we can bring this uh, our activity sheet to our dashboard as well uh, through uh, through this simple, uh, Simple trick: just drag and drop, and uh, it's right there. It uh, takes the um, takes the original uh, takes the original um, format, so uh, uh, so it gives us already our uh, tape, uh, our title and uh, the shading as well. Okay, let's uh, make this dashboard a little bit uh, cleaner. Um, um, we we don't want to have uh, to scroll much for uh, this. Uh, uh, for this uh, trim up right here. So we can just play around it, make it make it smaller, make some other charts bigger. Uh, all right, and trend lines can stay the same like this. All right, now uh, we have a dashboard that contains quite a lot of information right now. We have activity of users and how active they are, um, sales by states, profit by states, profit trends and sales trends. Mm, but we don't have much interactivity going on. We just uh, have the, we just have this information um, that we can sure take a look on, maybe drill down through uh, regions uh, and states, but um, we want to have some filters so that we can see um, a deeper, uh, we can have a deeper look to our data. All right, so um, if, um, if you wanna have a filter for your data and if you want to add them in the dashboard, um, you go to one of the sheets, and we already know how to go to the sheets. Now uh, we just uh, uh, select uh, one of one of the charts and press go to sheet, and we are back to that sheet. All right. Um, now let's say we want to have um, filters for um, 
let's say the city and we can drag and drop again and bring it to filters. It again asks us which one uh, we want to use it yet, but I don't want to use filters yet. I just want to add them so that in the future I can add them to the dashboard. So I'll just select all and apply. Um, also, I want to have uh, filters for activity because I want to be able to filter all my data by uh, active users or passive users or medium users. Um, and again, I will select all and apply. Um, all right, anything else we want to, maybe we can add the segment because um, we had not really discussed the segment, but segment is um, corp consumer, corporate and home, home office. So this data already has uh, some uh, information about what who the consumer is. It's a normal consumer, corporate or home office. So um, just to see how it goes, uh, we can see that consumers, normal consumers are the biggest users then the corporate and the home office. All right, so we can um, add uh, this filter as well. And also add the subcategory filter, which is a um, big, um, which is a category filter, but um, more detailed. It has uh, a, a better uh, deep down look on the data. All right, and let's add the category right now as well. Okay, we have four filters right now. Um, and these four filters um, are uh, expanded and uh, they can be used to filter only this sheet that we are right now. So see, we have this, um, we have this activity um, pie chart here. And uh, if we go to another sheet, well, there are no filters. Mm, a good thing about Tableau is that you can um, select these filters and uh, just you see this triangle. Um, and um, you can make some actions about it, but uh, the most uh, the most usable and most used action is uh, um, applying to uh, different worksheets. So here I, I, I have um, only this worksheet, so it only affects this worksheet, but let's select all using this data source. And when I use the all using this data source, it, um, it helps, uh, uh, it helps automatically and it adds uh, this filter to all the sheets. So if we go to all the sheets, we can see that, well, this sheet, this uh, filter is everywhere. All right, let's go back and uh, do the same for the other three ones. Um, so we wanna select and apply to worksheets and all using this data source. Apply to worksheets and all using this data source. All right, so we have our filters ready and they're ready to be inserted in the dashboard. Let's go back to our dashboard. Um, let's uh, remove uh, this legend uh, for a little bit uh, for in our dashboard because we uh, we indicate uh, activity already in the um, in the labels. Okay, now if you want to add a filter to the dashboard, you uh, click on one of the elements of the dashboard, one of the sheets. Now um, you again see these more options, and you can see the filters. And uh, when I go to filters, I can see activity, category, city, subcategory, and some of sales. Let's add these filters now. So activity, and it's brought up right here. Uh, category, city, and subcategory. All right, so um, the default uh, way the filters look in Tableau is um, um, that you can see all of, the, um, all of the values right away. And all of them are uh, all of them are checked, so nothing is filtered when you when, when you do it first. But here you can see in the city, um, well, I have to select each one each by itself, and it's um, it's not really nice in the experience um, from the experience standpoint. So we want to change these filters. So in activity, we can um, we can go to the filter, uh, we can click again more options. And then we can uh, these uh, different types of um, uh, filter types that we can employ. For example, single value list, which only allows to filter single value. Uh, so if you um, if you select active user, you cannot select a uh, medium user, sorry, an average user or a super active user at the same time. Uh, but we want to be able to use multiple values, right? Yes. So we select multiple values, and we have list. Drop down and custom list. Now, I think uh, in this case, drop down is the best. We just have, to, and we have this visual visualization. We just um, we can write, we can 
just select a couple of them at the same time. If we uh, click on all, um, everything is excluded and dashboard is uh, cleared. And uh, we can just select active users and see all the data we can we have on active users, on average users, uh, passives, and others as well. So we can uh, do this for uh, all the filters because usually all the filters um, should be for the best case. Um, if you if you want to use it for filtering the dashboard and interactivity, the best way to go with it is multiple values and drop down. All right, here we have four filters right here. Um, and um, if we, so let's select one of the cities. So for example, um, for example, we can, yeah, let's go with this one. See, we can um, have that here, we have only mm -hmm, passive and average users. Um, the um, sales per category are different than the uh, the normal one. Sales trend is also uh, going down because um, we have less sales and profit trend uh, is similar. So um, this is how it goes with uh, uh, different uh, different types of filters. So you can also uh, play around it. You can uh, select only furniture and uh, add only active users, so you can see what are active users doing in the furniture department or um, you can select all of all and filter by subcategory. Maybe you wanna go to see only books or art and uh, see the data. And this is a very interactive um, capabilities that Tableau has in this case. So, okay, we have uh, created our first dashboard. It contains, uh, uh, it contains a lot of elements, different types of visualizations um, and filters. Mm, I think now it's better to um, go back to the data source and um, go through some of the uh, data preparation uh, steps that we can take uh, before we uh, start using visualizations in the rest uh, uh, maybe five minutes or so and uh, uh, and yeah so here uh, if you remember when you go back to the data source uh, we have uh, we have this uh, sheet that shows us all the data so this data has uh, this data has around uh, uh, 10,000 rows. Um, and um, also we have, uh, if you remember, we have uh, three sheets. We have orders, we have people and returns. Um, let's say we want to um, see what this uh, people contains. So it contains uh, uh, four names and they are mapped to region. So remember we had this region filter, region variable that we use to create a hierarchy with. Uh, for the state. Um, here we have uh, people who are responsible for uh, this region. Uh, so there are company employees who are overseeing this uh, region. So um, this data, orders data, does not contain that information. It only the people can only the people data contains. So uh, for uh, more advanced users, um, it's nice to have uh, uh, it's nice to have uh, the possibility of joining. Uh, uh, different uh, data sources uh, to uh, one uh, uh, in Tableau itself. So uh, if you want to create a join um, and join uh, orders to people, you just uh, bring it here. Um, and uh, you select what type of join you want, um, left, right, floater, inner. Um, so in, in this case, we want left because we want to have all the information that is in the orders table. And uh, and add uh, people um, only to those uh, which have values in uh, orders. And here we can also choose uh, which uh, field you want to be uh, joined joined by. So we can Tableau already knows that there is a region here and there is also a region here. So it assumes um, that these values are similar. And uh, for the sake of the tutorial, this is also similar. So we can use this join. All right, so we have this join ready. We um, have orders table here that we have already explored and created a dashboard for it as well. Um, and now we can add some more information to it that which is not in the original data set. All right, so we have um, this join already ready. Since it's a very small table, it does uh, uh, this join very, very fast. But if you're working with the larger database, um, uh, these joins and extracts uh, can take some time. So. Um, be wary of that definitely. 
All right, now we have uh, this join again. And uh, if you create a new uh, field, you can see that we have some new table, new um, data here. So here we have uh, orders that we have already seen and there are some new, um, new variables. So person and uh, the region, region is the same. And uh, it shows us that it's from the people table, not, uh, not the region from the orders table. Okay, so this, um, uh, this, this was just to show you that Tableau has also possibilities for uh, joins um, and uh, this type of, uh, um, this type of uh, data manipulations. Um, also for, again, for uh, more experienced users, uh, since we are using Excel here, we don't have this option uh, displayed, but if we were using uh, um, a database, we could, uh, we, we would have uh, something like a new, um, a uh, new custom SQL. So when you click here, we have new union, but you would also have new union and uh, new custom SQL. So when you when you open new custom SQL, you can write uh, SQL code uh, to uh, retrieve uh, information from the database and uh, uh, join as well. Uh, so uh, it's not the best type of editor that you can use for SQL, but um, sometimes it can come clutch when you have situations uh, where you don't have a data management software and um, you have some tables that you want to group or uh, filter and uh, the capability of uh, um, capability is very nice to be able to um, write a select statement here. Okay, great. Um, now um, let's uh, explore some other functions Tableau um, has to offer. Um, we have uh, a lot of advanced functions that we have not gone through, uh, but uh, I will upload the presentation and you will be able to see uh, those functions when, um, when uh, you want. Uh, but some, uh, for, for some uh, very low level analysis, um, let's say uh, we select, let's, let's just create a new, a new sheet. And uh, in this new sheet, uh, let's have uh, uh, subcategory. Mm, and uh, in the subcategory, we have, uh, let's say, um, sales. So we have this data of uh, sales per um, subcategory. Um, okay, uh, we can very quickly create um, some um, analytics here. So we have this data pane here, uh, and also we have analytics uh, tab. So totals are very easy to do. So we just uh, bring it to column current totals and you can see um, you can see the current web going totals as well. Also, it's quite easy to write um, percentages uh, next to the total. So um, if you want to see um, what percentage phone start to this one, one total, just write some. Sorry. If you want to see that, you um, again write sum of sales. First, it's only um, a detail, so it doesn't show anything. But then afterwards, when you create it afterwards, it's it's better to um, add the table, a quick, quick table calculation and um, a percent of total. It has many, um, many uh, things you can do here. Difference, uh, percent difference, uh, percent of the total, rank, percentile. But in this case, we just want to know percent of total. So uh, let's... Uh, also bring it to label because if we don't uh, write text here, it won't show you. So here we have, uh, and let's uh, click the table again. And there we go. We have uh, we have a subcategory and what is the share of the subcategory in total sales? And, uh, and we can also sort it if you wanna have a table review. Um, also, we can uh, add this type of data to the dashboard, which is, uh, well, this dashboard is already, um, contains a lot of information, but if you want it to uh, have even more information, you can definitely add it. Uh, all right. Um, um, also here, um, not, we, are, we can also create this type of, uh, uh, this type of um, uh, tree maps uh, for, including uh, uh, sales by subcategory. Um, and uh, here as well, it's really easy to write uh, uh, what percentage uh, the sum of sales for individual, uh, for individual um, 
subcategory is uh, uh, if we uh, want to count the uh, percentage of uh, this. So we just write some of sales and uh, we create a quick table calculation of uh, uh, percent of total. And we then show it and it shows you the percentage as well. Um, all right, I think we have gone through most of the, most of the, um, uh, most of the uh, very basic things that we can do with Tableau. Mm, I um, hope most of you followed uh, and uh, try, to, um, try to do the same. Um, right now, I want to uh, go through, um, go through um, some things that we uh, covered and uh, it's probably better to go through the things that uh, we can, uh, you can add up add uh, to this tutorial. So, um, very interesting thing that you can um, work on is uh, parameters. It uh, it allows you to um, it allows you uh, to have very nice data uh, data parameters. It allows you to create uh, uh, different charts on the same sheet. Uh, so, if you want to further learn Tableau, the first thing that comes to mind is uh, parameters. Um, then you should go to uh, logical functions. Uh, there are case functions, uh, if functions, and uh, other types of functions, and also fixed, um, which is a very, very important function in Tableau. Um, also, date, string, and logical uh, date and string functions. Um, stories, uh, which is another way to uh, visualize, uh, uh, tab uh, visualize dashboards, um, and actions. Um, actions are um, Actions are what uh, Tableau can do when um, you create a, uh, you uh, click on some click on some uh, part of the, of the data. Let's say uh, you click on uh, this uh, chairs, and uh, then uh, it get then you get redirected to another sheet, um, um, or it filters the dashboard containing only chairs uh, or only only accessories. So it is a very nifty and very um, very nice. Um, function that you can use maybe in further tutorials or uh, if you want to go through it uh, uh, yourself, that's also a great, um, great way to do it. Um, all right, um, now I think it's the best time to um, go through some questions if you have um, in, in type of questions. Um, and also after that, um, I think we can conclude the tutorial. Um, so uh, yeah, are there any questions uh, that we'd like to discuss? Uh, Uh, it actually, there is one question in the chat. Maybe you can read it. Uh, All right. Oh, there is. No, right? Oh, great. So we have um, some, um, uh, we have some questions. For example, uh, uh, the example of a joint people region dimensions is about to see which employee does better. Um, Will we join people uh, with sales, for example? Yeah, all of the things that you mentioned right now are possible, definitely. Mm, uh, you, can, uh, mm, uh, you can employ this, um, uh, this uh, Excel sheet that we have. Um, there are a lot of visualizations created, uh, created with this, uh, this particular data, data set, and it's very, um, very, very usable. So uh, I think it's better if you wanna um, if you wanna uh, practice on some joints uh, um, and to use the people in region dimensions as well. Uh, I'm sure you can um, you can download it and uh, use the tablet yourself. Uh, all right, the webinar record will I think it will be available because we are recording it, right? Uh, yes, sure. And uh, I, I think Irakli will be also able to uh, share his presentation, so we will send out yes. both. Um. All right, this went quite quick because uh, um, there was no um, there was no uh, uh, no inter uh, no no much interaction. Um, but uh, I really hope that you um, found out more about Tableau today, um, and uh, I hope that you are excited that it doesn't take much time to learn. It does. It's very easy to um, grasp. Uh, you can um, you can definitely have an impact in a really short time, which is uh, very necessary for uh, businesses and, and NGOs today. You can uh, even very simply you can even very simply you can uh, create some designs. Uh, you can add uh, labels to dashboards yourself. So um, please go um, to a bigger detail uh, and uh, get interested in this because. Uh, 
uh, as, you, as you saw right now, uh, it's mostly drag and drop, only some functions that you can, um, only some functions that you uh, will have to use sometimes when you wanna, for example, group the variables or fixed functions or some calculated fields. So um, if you are a new user, don't be afraid of it. It's very easy and uh, uh, we will, um, and myself, I, uh, I have my email available uh, to you as well, I hope. And uh, if you have any questions uh, that I can answer, uh, I will be very glad to. So, yeah. I can read out um, more questions, actually, if you don't mind. So yeah. uh, Gunnar also wants to know uh, that um, whether we can use PDF files as well. Um, PDF files, you mean uh, the presentation files, right? Um, I think like- uh, uh, In Tableau, in Tableau, yeah. you said. Yeah. Yes, there is um, uh, there is um, such uh, opportunity as well. Um, sometimes it's uh, you. You might want to be sure that the um, PDF file is uh, very very well. Uh, sometimes uh, it can be quite hard to use, but yeah, it it definitely can be used uh, in Tableau as well. Uh, YouTube channel that I, I would advise to check. Well, there are a lot of ways available. Um, Tableau is one of the most popular um, things YouTubers are doing uh, in the in the sense of data in the sense of data visualization and uh, analytics. Um, I will get back to you. I will, I will select the best one. I will get to you because I can't really tell you uh, the best one right now. All right. Um, um, Tell me, have any further? Oh, you uh, no, actually, there is no more questions. Right. I have a feeling that we will have this huge email coming up with all the <laughs> requested um, uh, tools and information. But for now, I think this is it from participant side. I think it was a lot of information to handle, and they are like thinking and digesting. Um, well, I hope it was uh, prof uh, it was uh, nice for everyone. Uh, if um, if you have any feedback to me that we, we, could, we could have done better, please get back. It's uh, it's always nice to know what you uh, did wrong or what you can improve upon. So um, that is also very appreciated. Uh, I personally think it was great, and people are also thanking you for the uh, interesting presentation. Um, so as uh, Irakli has said um, you can reach out to him. Uh, he is kind enough to uh, share his uh, email, as I remember. Yeah, yeah uh, sure. <laughs> uh, so this is it for today. Thank you, Irakli, so much. This was really, really timely and useful. Um, as promised uh, to participants, we will share the PDF, we will share this recording. Kirakli would also advise you the uh, good uh, resources from YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, as for other webinars, I mentioned earlier, if you have any data related knowledge and would like to share with others, please reach out to me. Or we will be also having webinars. Um, we have it all the time. So mm -hmm. just follow our social media in DataFest Belisi and you will be informed. Thanks again and uh, see you around. Hopefully Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. And uh, yeah, see you around. Don't miss that fest. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> uh, uh, one of the best things you can attend in Tbilisi. So um, I've, been, I've been attending it since, uh, yeah, I think two or three years and all, and all the times it blew my mind. So please attend and uh, it's, uh, it's very worthwhile. Thank you and have a okay. great evening. Bye. Bye. Bye, thank you very much.